So why does Jordan Peterson want us to be precise in our speech? Why should we not bother children while they are skateboarding? And finally, why should we pet a cat when we encounter one on the street? What if I don't like cats? Let's dive deep into the unknown and rescue the truths that lie behind Jordan Peterson's 12 rules for life. Hello Petersonites, welcome to part 5 about Jordan Peterson's 12 rules for life. I am Nick Redmark and I am here to help you master your mind. Because think about it, through your mind you experience the world, through your mind you act in the world. If you don't understand your mind, well, then you don't understand the major tool, if not the only tool, that you use to actually be effective in the world. So important. Rule number 10 is be precise in your speech. I mean, we are at rule number 10. I don't feel like I have to go too much in depth anymore because there are common themes. The reason you should be precise in your speech is the same. You should tell the truth. You have a map of the world. You use that to achieve your goal, but both your goal and your map are insufficient because the world is way more complicated than you are. Therefore, you have to pay attention to the things that don't fit your map and your story and your goal. And as a consequence, you have to tell the truth about those things. And it's not just about telling the truth, as we can see in this chapter, it's about being precise about them. If you're vague about your problem, you don't get the pain of having an actual problem, except when it then really manifests itself. If you're vague about your goals, you don't get the pain of failing, but of course you also don't achieve it. Another observation is that language is what structures our perception just above what is raw data, and it is what structures our own self-concept, our story, and it is what structures the way we act in the world, and therefore the way the world is built. If the language we use is imprecise, then we are weak, then our actions are imprecise. The world that we build, the structures we erect, the societies we build are weak as well. Okay, tell the truth, but not just tell the truth. Tell the truth as precisely as possible. So the truth that I extracted from this is language, structures, soul and the world. Rule 11 is don't bother children while they are skateboarding. And this is Peterson's most political chapter. It's a commentary on the current political climate. One way to frame it is to say that we are ready to accept nowadays that there is such a thing as too much masculinity, that there is too much aggression. What we might a bit less willing to accept is that there is also something like too much femininity, which manifests itself in an overprotectiveness towards our children and within the political realm when compassion drives us towards creating equality at all costs, even genuine differences between people such as differences in interest and differences in competence. So in a sense this chapter is a bit of a course correction, a commentary on a certain direction society has taken, both in the educational field and in the political field. And the truth that I would extract from this is that both masculinity and femininity have positive and negative poles. And finally, rule 12 is pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. And this is about rough times. Vulnerability is an inevitable part of existence and therefore there will be rough times until you reach the ultimately rough time that kills you, basically. And the question is, how do you deal with rough times? And the answer is that it's not that different than normal times. You're still fundamentally responsible for aiming towards the good. So you cannot use your rough times as an excuse not to aim for something better. But the way you go about it is a bit different. In practice, what you have to do is to reduce your time horizon. Instead of planning five years ahead, you might have to plan the next day and try to make the next day a bit less miserable than it would have been otherwise. So in a sense, you have to aim lower and look at the small things that you can improve and at the small things that you can appreciate and at the small gifts of existence, such as, for example, a cat walking down the street. And I guess a dog would be fine too. Okay, 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 we have analyzed each rule, we have found the truth behind each rule, but what about the book as a whole? 
What does Peterson want to tell us? Is there a way to simplify the whole thing down and boil it down to one rule? Well, you can find out in this video. I'm Nick Redmark and I want you to master your mind. Subscribe. How one gets better at something, just do it. And be aware of the feelings that you have while you do it. And uh, that's what I'm doing right now. But I'm not doing it often enough. I should, I should probably do it more often. I should talk to the camera more often. 